music and, and, and learning and independent minyanim, that whole world is, is bereft of Israel. You go, you go to Slingshot, which is a, a publication that, 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 uh, that, um, that honors uh, innovation in Jewish life. You find an Israel-related innovation in Jewish life. There's one and a half. There's Encounter, which uh, takes, uh, takes Jewish leaders to, and educators to Bethlehem. And there's present tense. So it's a very nice thing. But what's really, I say half because it's really here. It's not really there. It's not really, it didn't come out of America. There's nothing else. There's no other, uh, there's no other innovation coming out of young people. And when you go to their, um, to their com communities and they want to talk about Israel, it's divisive. It's really a problem. We, you know, we, 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 we'd rather do other things. And they do other things. They, they daven, they learn, they do all kinds of great, you know, things that we all believe in, but Israel is, is absent. And that's my concern. These rabbis, that condition, the politics that we have, um, I, I, I'm sounding a warning bell that we are, we are really, uh, um, we're really uh, facing a, 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 dropping, a, a dropping out of Israel from, the, from, from this uh, significant group of 10, 20,000 uh, people. And the last thing, and the reason I have become much more vocal in my own, my own views, because I, I want to help create the space. And, you know, maybe it's minor personal sacrifice. Maybe not. But I, I, I think we need to speak a, a lot more about Israel. Positions all over the place, right, left, center, and so forth and so on. So with that, now we, they can, now the, the, the floor's open. Floor's open. Yeah, so to speak. Yes, Leah. All right, let's Wait, Dory, you have to go. I'm, I'm going to, Dory has a pressing engagement. Right, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to ask the balabaya to. We have a JCBA tradition. You kind of take three at a time. Three at a time. You want to mold them together? Would you like, or would you prefer one at a time? One at a time. I, how do I how do I make jokes with anybody? Try it. Try it. We'll never get the frame. <laughs> Did any of your survey work deal with positions taken by your sample group? Uh, issues like should Jerusalem be divided? Uh, seven lines on the salient. Uh, yeah. After Obama's address, uh, uh, right. Uh, touch on those specific policy subjects. Do you generally favor or oppose Israeli-Palestinian negoti negotiations on the basis of the 67 borders with land swaps? 70, 76, 63. Do you generally favor or oppose President Obama calling for negotiations like that? 53, 63, 51. So, so there's basic support for the land, sw land swaps, and, and then some hesitancy, but still support for Obama saying that Israel should do what they believe Israel should do. Right, you know, the general surveys should say when you see the word impose, the support for the idea goes down. Or people don't want to impose settlement, but they may support the idea. Like, right, that, that, that's, that's yeah, yeah. Okay, Friday, I think. Actually, I called later, so. Okay, good luck, you Thank you. Um, based on the survey, the trend is expected to unless something dramatically will happen. I think so. Yeah. What do we do? I mean, how do we reconnect? What works? I I really think we have to we have to re-expand the tent. We have to we have to make people feel comfortable having positions um, like Yoel Marcus. And you know, like uh, Ephraim, uh, Eph you know, Ephraim Snare, like you know, a whole bunch of people who have a different position. You know, that 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 position that BB isn't serious about the peace process. That Israel's making a big mistake with the settlements. That like that stuff, which is Zionism as I I understand it. I I, was, I, I grew up as a basically as a, as a labor Zionist. I had again I had Marla Barone, uh, you know, uh, sending uh, Lova Eli off to campus. That was, that was Zionism. We, I learned that the settlements were only created for security purposes and they would be given back the second we had a peace deal. That there was no, this was back in 69, 70, 71. I was defending, I was defending Israel on the campus. <laughs> I, so I said, yeah, that's my position. So I still have, I still have the same position. I'm not a Zionist. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not part of this camp. I made Aliyah. My, my daughter's working for the state prosecutor. We're, 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 not, we're not good Israelis. So <coughs> that type of hold on Israel among people who, who are deeply critical of this government for security, ideological, and other reasons, those people should feel like they're in the tent. And right now they're being told, shut up, we'll take away your funding. That's what they believe. I think, I think by the way, they're true. And by the way, you're really not supportive of Israel. You're really not, you're, you're, you're hurting Israel by, by, by voicing those points, points of view. 
That's ridiculous. It's it's unless you could say, you know what? This Zionist discourse as part of American Jewry, it's I understand we're gonna lose some of it. I'd rather have the political support, you know, up and down the line. You can make that you can make that that's a different that's a different conversation. But if you think you want to have these people, these rabbis, this person, my daughter, as part of the Zionist camp, then you, then, you, then, then, the, then the center and the right has got to shift its views, and the center has got to tell the right, stop that. So it doesn't, it doesn't help us to call them disloyal, hurting Israel, so and so on. We have a difference of, a difference of view, just like, just like we do in Israel. It's part of the Jewish conversation. That, so that's going to happen. You had a frame. Yeah. You still do the same job for Prime? Yeah. You still working on it? Yeah, yeah. Take it for you. Okay. God bless. Um, I'm from the same generation that's working. I think it's working. It's not working. Okay. It is working. It is, it is working. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm from the same generation as you, and uh, three things that became very important. Where did you go to school? Hawaii. Yeah. That, that became important in the wake of the Six Day War were the efforts to save Jews and Jews in danger, right. the uh, defense of Israel, and the memory of the Shoah. And all those things became much more important than they were prior to the Six Day War. Right. So, my question to you is: Do you see a similar sort of disinterest in the Shoah? I don't know if you if you even examine that. That's one question. Second question is: You talk about the Orthodox as if it's one. Uh, you know, homogeneous group. What about the ultra orthodox? So the people who ideologically don't support Zionism. Do you have any idea about that? Where they stand on these issues? First of all, I don't, I don't, I don't know who's ultra orthodox anymore. I don't know because uh, no, it's not. It's the the, the Haredim who are extremely American Haredim who are slight, who are slight uh, different than the Israeli Haredim. No, it's a Haredim. You, you have a problem with them. Yeah, you know. I, the, the answer is this is fine. This is not my area of expertise. Okay, so I'll, I'll be, I'll, be so I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of that. I, I actually, haven't, thank you for doing this because I happen to be working on a study where I can actually look at that issue, and uh, I appreciate it. Um, I, have, I have data on it. I just haven't thought about it. That's good. It's a great question. What was your, what was your other comment oh, about the, about the show? I think. And the role that show up plays in today's Jewish identity. Look, I, I think, I think it's part of this unfortunate. A division of camps, which means that the, the, each camp doesn't learn from each other. So, I, I'm going to I'm going to predict, and I you know I really haven't looked at it, but it would make sense that the express the expressive camp and certainly the progressive camp does not see as much the Shoah as part of its symbol system, and I think that's I think it's a tremendous loss, and there's a, there's a loss on the other side. But it, but so so again, it's it's about the co-optation or the abandonment. Uh, but of of certain symbols, because of our political and, and so, socio cultural divisions, so therefore we have a special need to recapture. And I remember I remember Yitz's lectures back in the '60s that uh, you and I probably went to. Um, recapture a way of appreciating the historic, political, moral, spiritual, religious significance of the Shoah. And I, frankly, as I think about it, as I say these words, I say, I, I, I don't remember a conversation that I was in where there was a serious thought given to the implications of the Shoah for our lives today. Years ago, I remember ha being in, a, in those conversations. It has not, has not happened recently. And Taka, it would be, it, it, you're hitting upon a, 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 I mean, I, you would, but uh, I, 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 no, I say this with admiration. The, you're hitting upon a very, very important issue that ought to be, uh, looked at because we, we you know we, we can't let it just kind of be a yeah it's a horrible memory and uh, we see you know movies and we read books once in a while but it really should be taken much more seriously and it's not I agree with you Manfred, Manfred. Yes, sir. yeah first of all thanks for an enlightening lecture like always I can say no, this is more controversial than the last one you had me to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, look, my lecture asked them the real tough questions. Because basically, the, looking at this for a number of years, the two issues are uh, at the heart of the issue is double standards and moral equivalence. Ask these guys, uh, are 
are people who promote genocide morally equivalent to a democracy? Let's see where the conservative rabbis stand uh, in their various generations and ask them, are people who uh, glorify people who murdered civilians uh, equivalent to, to a democracy with a judicial system? Ask them the hard questions. Uh, see where, where future conservative leadership is really going. I, I, I think what you need to understand is that the different moral conversations that are taking place. And um, I am, um, I observe with hmm, not, not quite amusement, I observe the different audiences that the left and the right has in mind when it has its moral conversations. The, the right conversation, um, all right, this is not, not the capital R. The, the, the right-wing conversation, the moral conversation is, look, we're basically more moral than those guys, or whatever they are, you know, that, that, are, that are enemies. Our enemies are evil, and we're basically good. They're basically evil, not, not all of them. We're basically good, not all of us, but basically, the, and, that's, and that's the conversation. You look, again, using um, Danny's idea, Danny Gordis' writing basically has that message. We're basically a good people. In fact, we're probably a little better than you American Jews who never made Aliyah. Um, um, and we're certainly much better than the people who are, who are, who are our enemies. That is, that is a right-wing discourse. It is not a left-wing discourse. The left-wing discourse is, who cares about that? Like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, like, we're, we will stipulate. We're very good people. Can we move on from that? Because what our conversation is not klape chus, but klape pnim. So the moral conversation of the left is a moral critique of the machinations of society. If you open, I didn't bring our arts today, you, open, you look on the front page of our arts, it's a book about homosexuals and, uh, and, and like all the, all the ills that are going on in society. That's, that's news. To say nothing of the opinion columns, there's an, the, it's, it's turned inward. It's saying, look at, look at what we're doing to ourselves. Look, look, at, look at our... So, so the right says, what are you publishing this, this crap for? Because people will read it. And the left says, how can you not publish this stuff? Because we want to we, we wanna fix, fix the society and make it better. We, are, we have two different audiences in mind, two different senses. And the other thing is, the right is very concerned about legitimacy of Israel. The left is not concerned about legitimacy of Israel as much. There's a, there's a real... We don't... Uh, so people, on behalf of the left. Answer the questions. Where because... On double standards. If you say to no, it's not. It's, to not, it's not. A, it's not a salient. The answer is, it's not a salient issue. You can. You can say, yeah, I agree. I agree that that terrorists and people who who who, who bless terrorists are disgusting, evil people. Stipulated, asma. It's not the end of the conversation. It's not. It's not an important issue. It's like, no, no, it's not. It's just like it's saying it's just not relevant to the political discourse. It's, it's a... That is the heart of humanitarian racism, what you say. It's just, it's, it's, it's kind of beside the point. It's like looking at the, the Andorran Stock Exchange and saying it's really important. It's just not, <laughs> it's not, it's not critical to the issue. You, 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 can't, you can't get out of this, 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 this say, I'm, I'm here. I'm saying, don't be there. Stop with worrying about legitimacy. Stop with trying to prove Israel is ba basically a better country than the people who are trying to attack us. Ignore that. It's not, it's not an issue anymore. Let's talk about something else. If you talk about something else, you, you, you never have that conversation. Sure. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go on. Uh, Sarah, and then we'll come back to that. <coughs> sorry, I'm making you walk back and forth. Sarah Schmidt, you had Ah, oh, Sarah Schmidt. Hi. Actually, I'm teaching an article for tomorrow. Which article? Do I, do I still do I, do I still agree with it? Yeah. Oh, that I agree with. Yeah. <laughs> what the, a, a tale to juries? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's the best thing I've written on it. Yeah. <laughs> who 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 are you teaching it to? I teach at Rutgers. Ah, what time? <laughs> you, you you want you want to do a Marshall McLuhan thing? You you start talking, I'll walk in. I was like, and here's what I really said. Go ahead. <laughs> Two thirty to four. You're welcome. Okay. Um, you've been using words like Zionist, pro-Israel. Yeah. And I will add another concept: post-Zionism. Okay. Which is something that I teach about because you have to teach about it. 
because uh, students who come for a semester or a year to Israel are like the Masai students, <coughs> your, whoever told you, they will see more varied perspectives than the 10 day birth right. Can you define, in, and we're almost 2012, can you define what you mean today by Zionism, pro Israel, and to what degree the post Zionist discourse? even though they may not call it that or realize that, has entered uh, the discourse of American Jews. And a second, a second question. I'll bring a look up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, do you so you want the three people with three questions. I got one person with five questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do, you ever, do you ever ask in your surveys, are you aware that uh, Israel has a democratically elected government, not, let us say, uh, right. like Russia, and that um, from the perspective of Israeli politics now, even though I read Haaretz every day and I read all the stuff you, before I even came here that you talked about, uh, there's likely to be a right-wing government, that is to say, a Likud, Lieberman, et cetera, government for some time to come particularly in view of the events happening around us, Hamas, Syria, Egypt. Right. So, so l l let, me, let me take the second question first and, and then go back to the first one, as far as I understand it. The, first, the second question. Um, I, certainly in my lectures to American Jewish publics, I always say, this is about where the Israeli public wants to be. We could, you know, if, if Sippy had done this rather than that. No, no, no. This is basically a reflection of the... Jewish constituency of Israel, uh, and 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 everyone everyone agree, would agree on that. And there's, so there is no there is no dispute in conversations that this is a democratically elected government and it it, it represents the will of the Israeli public. That's the, that's the, you don't hear that. You don't hear people saying uh, the election was stolen. And there was a Supreme Court that looked through charts and went this way or that way. No, you, you don't. Not, there's nothing like that. That that we're waiting at, at any moment. Uh, the, the real Israelis will stand up and knock knock off Likud and so forth and so on. There's no, just none. It's just really, it's not, it's not in the air. It's just not, not there. So, um, but uh, what is in the air? Like what, what, what do you hear? Um, and this, you, you just watch the writings. This Israeli government was elected by a coalition of three groups, with whom we don't agree. Shas, uh, the, you know, the, the, the 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 Orthodox, you know, the. Um, the settler movement, uh, uh, right wing revisionist Zionists. Uh, who do I leave that? Um, no, they're, they're, they're the Russians. Yeah. If you, if you add up the Israeli public, you have the Russians, the, the North African, the, the and, and the settlers. That's a majority. And uh, and if, if, and you turn around and if you looked at Israelis who look like you, I, I just lectured at Park Avenue Synagogue uh, a few weeks ago. Who, who is like you? College educated, low dot T, not Russian, not Moroccan. Um, that group, if you look at look at who they're voting for, they're voting the, the middle. Their middle of their of their votes is somewhere, you know, in, in, in New Labor, give or take, whatever. So if, if you got you know if you got rid of all the, all the groups that I, I just mentioned before, so so what's understood is that th th they that they have a minority position. Now the next question in American Jewry is. Do American Jews have the obligation to, to, to support or right to oppose the democratic elected government of Israel? So the, the, the right and APAC says that's our responsibility. You, you, can't, the, you have to follow the, the Israeli government. I say, like, how, how can we have a, a good Zionism if we're supposed to, like in Israel you can, you can say what you want, so why can't you say it in, 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 in Brooklyn? So, I'll talk to you. Uh, that's a little, but next question. Next question. Good. Good question. Next question. So now, now your first question. For me, what's Zionism? The absolute right for Jews to a national state in our national homeland. Like what's and uh, yeah, Jewish state, national, national homeland. I, I, I didn't throw the word democratic. In there. I'm, an, I'm a nationalist. I'm a very strong ethnocentric uh, nationalist. I would, I would like democratic too. It'd be very nice. I'm very. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for democracy. Um, but, but, but not all Zionism has to be democratic. It could be there's an anti-democratic Zionism. And uh, just to, to get into the post-Zionist issue, um, 
I have very different reactions to different types of anti Zionists. Um, when I'm working with a working circle, the Abitaring, and there's a bunch of anti Zionists there, and they're anti Zionists from a, a post Bundist point of view, I, I view it with some amusement. Like, you know, it's, they're Jewish, you know, like, and, and I sat with the, I, and then another occasion, I sat with the leader, the, the oh, a very nice lady, actually, who's got the, the leader of a Jewish voice, so-called Jewish voice for peace, uh, so-called peace, and, and I said, why, why do you, she said, our, our policy is that we, we take no position on whether there should be one state or two states. And one state is not like, doesn't mean Jews controlling the Jordan River to, 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 to the Mediterranean. She, she didn't mean that. She meant another kind of state. So, so I said to her, and she's a woman who's got an Israeli husband and three kids who speak Hebrew better than some people in this audience. So I said, well, your ideas are destructive and despicable. But I'll be happy to, to continue to talk to, talk to you. And I, I bought her lunch and everything else. And then she called again and said, let's, let's, let's sit. I'd like to talk. I, I talked to her again. And I would end the conversation. So I wanted to say this so I could say it to you, that I said this to her. And she said, really? So, so, so there's different types of anti-Zionism. I'm not sure about what post-Zionism is, but there's different types of anti-Zionism. Of anti and they have to be, and they have to be understood. In the, by the way, in the amused category, like pro-Jewish, but like waffling on Zionism, I'll put Tony Kushner as well. I, I, went, I, I was at a public lecture, and I was posted, in, and I was told not to say this. So I said it anyway. I said, Mr. Kushner, are you anti-Israel? That was my question. And he went through a long, he said, you know, he said, basically, I would not have wanted Israel to be created once Mil but it exists, and I don't want to see the destruction of my, my, you know, my, my family, my friends, and the, the Jews. Or, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not. So now that we have an Israel, so forth and so on. So, it's kind of like an ideological uh, non-Zionism. So that's what you have out there. I don't see a lot of of post-Zionism in the United States. I see it here. I mean, there are these intellectuals who are making up all kinds of. Re I, I'm not. I am not sure. Uh, I mean, there's anti-Zionism, but there's not like, like it says, anti there are people who hate Israel. There's people who don't believe in Zionism, but they're not post-Zionism. Well, post-Zionism comes from within the Jewish people and evolves an ideology that says, what, that Israel isn't a good idea? So, some, some version, like basically Israel's not a good idea? Is that what post-Zionism is? I, and that, you know, um, I don't see, I really don't see a lot of that, you know, a lot of that writing, you know. Uh, Tony Judd, Oliver Shalom, you want know, to call him a post-Zionist? He never was a Zionist. I mean, he was a Zionist, actually. He was a Hubbard name boy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't see a lot, uh, to be, so I'm, I'm answering your question. I don't see a lot of post-Zionism in America. I see anti-Zionism. I see anti-Israel. But I don't see, I don't see a lot of post-Zionism. Post-Zionism, I think, has to be a locally grown product, and it hasn't been exported I would say yet, but I don't see it happening in the future. Like you, you need so much. You, you, like it's, a, it's the difference between you know, the Amaharits and the uh, the uh, the, the Post-Zionism is an, is an Apikoros movement. You got to know enough to become a post-Zionist. You, you just can't. You just can't wake up one day and become you know become anti-Israel. Why is that post Zionism? Um, because what, first of all, Benny Morris uh, defined himself as the first post Zionist, and he looked into war of independence right. and found that uh, not all the Arabs ran away. From yeah, 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 yeah. I read, I read the book. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a sign in many college courses. Uh, yes, sir. That's my. And what the kids get from that is what, what you're calling, and I would agree with you. Kind of I, I don't say it. I don't agree with you. I don't agree that he's a, he's he's anti-Zionist, post-Zionist. Like I I, 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 I took a course at Arthur Hertzberg for a year. I learned I, I learned I also learned, learned Zionism. And I learned that Zionism is a you know, pretty broad movement. It's, it's got Jabotinsky and it also has a uh, it's you know it's, it's got uh, binational state people. In it. They're, they're Zionists. They're they're part of the whole Zionist tent. Stephen, I think the, the truth yeah. is I want to move on to Hunter, yeah. but I think you both may be right because Sarah. 
what they're reading and getting from that as it is expounded upon is probably, uh, you know, what may be called post-Zionism, anti-Israel, etc. But on the other hand, what Steve is saying is also correct because, you know, it's uh, Benny Morris, you know, it, I, I think would, would have an Ahabat Zion, an Ahabat Yisrael. Oh, he's changed yeah. No, be, when he wrote Which the book. Even then, but, he, he the but even then, he was doing he was doing an academic yeah. research into into how Israel handled nineteen forty eight post forty eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's move on. Hannah. Um, I have two short statements, and then and then I'd like to ask a question. Okay. Um, you, you you know you can ask a question by giving the statements and asking me if I agree with you. That that also works. Saudis have been funding um, uh, American universities for many years, and of course they teach Wahhabism. There's also Muslim-Jewish dialogue on many university campuses, right. and it's always in favor of the Muslims. Uh, maybe that's one of the reasons that some of our young students are coming out and, and not really thinking that much about, they don't know the history. Our Jewish students, many of them have not learned the history of the region. They do not understand a lot as much as the Muslim students understand their their uh, part. Uh, I was involved in Jewish education for most of 35 years uh, in the States before I made Aliyah. Another point here, Israel has very poor Hezbollah, which is something that I do now privately. And we don't get the story across. Uh, you differentiate between the different groups. And I'd like to ask, is there not a common denominator among all these groups do they not see that they have the same, that the West, uh, is, that the question here, the danger here, is part of a much larger picture? We wouldn't say that one, that the left eye of the Mona Lisa is the picture. We are just one eye of the whole large picture. Is there not something that unites all of Jews there? Do they not understand that the United States is big Satan, we are the little Satan? Do they not feel that danger? Does it have to come upon them no. before they really understand? No, we, we, again, you know, what, I'm, what I was trying to let you understand is that there are these different perspectives on the world. And the perspective that there's this big danger, that a vulnerability, a threat from various sources is, is peculiar to people who generally have right of center attitudes mm -hmm. on Jewish issues and, and other issues. It is not universally held people on the left of center see the world as a friendlier place than the people on the right of center. That's where they disagree. So you could convince, try to convince them, but there's a, there really is a basic disagreement on the friendliness or threat from the world. It's not move on, may love. It's not like they're deluding themselves that they have a different position. <coughs> Number two, I don't, know what you, well, I don't know what you mean by basically you're implying that Jews of the past knew more about Israel than Jews today. Hafuch. Jews today know a lot more about Israel than Jews of the past. My, my father's mother's friends, you know, Izzy Brock and Tiny and, 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 uh, and, and Mac Phillipson, I'm, these names are real people, they're all dead. But these are simple, Pashita, working class Jews of Brooklyn. They knew nothing about Israel. They didn't know a word of Hebrew. Nothing. They couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't say Kiddush, they couldn't read, they couldn't read a book, they couldn't read a sitter. This is the world that I grew up in. This was hundreds of thousands of Jews in America. Please, today we have many more Jews who've gone to day school, many more Jews who speak Hebrew, many more Jews who've been to Israel for short periods of time, and many more Jews have been to Israel for long periods of time. The knowledge of Israel, and, and there, are, there, there are Jewish studies programs on campuses that didn't exist in the 1960s and 70s. And there, and there are many, many, many more courses in Israel. So you could say it doesn't encompass all the students, this and that, anything. Fine. But please understand, this is a much high, more highly educated group about Israel and Israel and Hebrew-related matters than ever existed in, in, in American Jewry. Amongst the elite? No, and among the 40% 40, 40 of the kids have been here. We're talking about, you know, whatever it is. The, the, the birth rate is really is bringing a lot to kids. And Massah is up. No, no one, the, the Massah story is like, it started with the 6,000, 7,000, it's now up to 12, 13,000. Um, the 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 the, uh, the Orthodox uh, yeshiva programs here way 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 up travel back and forth plus reading the the internet there's so much more access than there used to be so many more hits on Haaretz and J Post than ever were. They don't many of them don't know that, that uh, till 1948 
we were Palestinians. It's, it's, a, it's a nosh point. It's, it's besides the point. Like, they, they, they don't know. They don't know that. It, 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 there are people who don't agree with you. Doesn't mean that if they only knew, they would agree with you. There are people who have different views. I know a lot. I, I, I know a lot. I know a lot. Know a lot more than you. I know a lot. I don't agree with you. We don't. We have different views of the world. It's not because I haven't been exposed to enough Israeli Hezbollah. I used to do Israeli Hezbollah. In fact, I think I still do Israeli Hezbollah. I was the major Zionist figure on, on the Columbia campus and probably in, in, in Jewish life in the 1960s. I was, the, I'm, I'm the guy. I, you know, like I mentioned Dory and then Leon and then Denny. We, we were, we're it. We know a lot about Israel. We have different points of view. It's not like, not like we haven't been exposed to enough information and therefore we're going to learn something different than, than, than we knew before. Um, Right here. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. And, and Edward Newman. I believe that the term Zionism is not as relevant today as it used to be. Uh, many people, they don't understand what is Zionism. They understand Israel. So if you ask a question of what you think about Zionism, uh, they, uh, they uh, feel uh, either, either they feel they uh, very, very vague about it, or they don't uh, express their opinion correctly. Uh, unfortunately, the meaning of Zionism in Israel is not clear as it used to be, because when we established Israel, there was a real meaning. Now, the meaning is not anymore as it used to be. So, to use that term in a survey, I think it does not give the clear picture of the opinion of the people Oh, I, I, I agree that if, we, if, we, if it was important to, to determine their knowledge or their opinion of Zionism, I'd spend more time on it. But we ask a lot of questions about things that people really don't know much about or, or are unclear about, like, are you a liberal or conservative? Do you believe in God? So, um, th these, th so from surveys, what you do is you, you get lots of information, and you look and see how, how the, how the, uh, how the uh, items, the questions are being, are being answered. And I assure you that I would never go from that question to saying, ah, oh, 95% of conservative rabbis say they're the Zionists, and therefore, therefore they know, you know, Alkali and, and Kalisha and Hess. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make that, wouldn't make that, uh, that assumption. Actually, they, they might know Alkali, Kalisha, and Hess. Um, um, b uh, and but, and but um, Zionism is, is, is is contested within Israel, right? Uh, you, know, you know, is Zionism continuing to b building a better society? Is it about um, building a, a strong economy? Is it about building uh, more yeshivim? Uh, what, is, what is Zionism? It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not clear here either, and people fight over the word Zionism. So, uh, as, as they have for many, many years. Uh, but I agree with you that the, in an age in which you're trying to found Israel and then secure Israel, we have a, a, a narrow definition of Zionism. And when we leave that age, pro-Israel, Zionist, whatever, it's, it's, it's a hard thing. And I, I've never spent a lot of time looking at American Jewish perception of the word Zionism. But your, your point is accurate, well taken. But just understand that I, I, I probably do not over-interpret my, my findings. Um, okay. yes. I want to accept, for uh, purposes of discussion, that there should be a big tent because there are different visions of the future of Israel. And we can accept that we can argue about it, but we care about Israel, whether it's left or right or center. My question is this. Based on your research, long term, thinking ahead a little bit, is it good for the Jews? Is it good for Israel? Let me put it this way. I recently spoke to a major funder in the Federation, talking millions of dollars. And he said the following, he said, why can't Israel get it together? Why can't we divide on 67 borders? I'm so embarrassed about Israel. I'm so embarrassed that we can't resolve this problem. Now tie that in with the fact that you've got Slingshot talking about Jewish innovation and not mentioning much about Israel. Uh, let me, it's not a Slingshot I didn't mention. The groups, the groups that are innovating don't include young Jews innovating around Israel. So Slingshot was doing his job. Exactly. It, it's even worse. And I was like, not like they're, they're, they're a bunch of anti-Zionists, a post-Zionists ran Slingshot and said, no, no, let's not talk about this new kibbutz 
Tnuwa or whatever. No, it doesn't exist. There, young people have not innovated around Israel. I'm, uh, that deeply, deeply bothers me. So and put that together with the fact that your survey is looking at what you call the elite of perhaps the right wing of... Of this cultural elite, yes. Right. Yeah. We're not talking about the average college student right. who's Jewish. Down the line, is it more about wanting to disengage with Israel or engage with Israel? In other words, would people rather just say that Israel just kind of go away and resolve its problems so we don't have to answer these questions and have to be looked at as representative because we're Jewish <laughs> and Israel from. Is well, it good for the Jews? Is it good for Israel if people want to have this very big tent that says, take care of your problems, make peace, and let's not look at this anymore? Well, uh, my idea of the big tent is that, like, I, 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 would, I would look at that I would not have a very positive reaction to somebody who said, "What are you guys doing?" And like, you know, the, the, he's basically a he's a Russia, right? Yeah. I would. I'm not talking about the Russia. I'm talking. I'm talking about the you know your your daily show. I'm talking about the the the, 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 the simple people as well as the the, the the Chachamim, with whom some of us may disagree and, and I may disagree. Um, so the big tent that I want to create is a tent of people who are engaged. With Israel, we're thinking about Israel. Who come back and forth, who speak Hebrew, who, you know, who've got relatives here, who's been here with the Hebrew University for a year. Like, there's a hardcore. There's thousands of people who have spent a long time in Israel, and their friends, and those and those people feel that they can't be part of the Israel conversation because of the, pl the political and other issues and loyalty questions that have been that have been raised. I don't want to lose them from the Israel conversation. And I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm secure. I, I have not just university tenure, but I have social tenure. You know, after 40 years of writing about the Jewish people, you know, within reason, I, I can pretty much say what I want, and no one's going to throw me out. Yeah, you know, once in a while, some place I can't go in, but the, but I, I, don't get, I don't get thrown out. But if you're 28 years old and you have these questions about Israel, you, you don't find up there's a place that you can go and not feel that you're being an, an oppressed, um, an, an oppressed minority. So we don't want that to happen. We want them involved, and then let's let's have our conversations, and then we'll then we'll talk. So, so we probably we won't convince each other. It's okay, it's okay. But I think American Jewry is better with Israel than without Israel, and I'm 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 worried about losing the attachment to Israel. Is, is there though a question about embarrassment? In other words, is there a way to judge to, to, to estimate how much of this is about? Not it's not. Yeah, it, it's it, it's a it's a frequent. Yeah, sorry. It's a frequent. Israeli view of the diaspora that you take your positions because you're embarrassed because you, you like it's, it's, a, it's it goes deep into Zionism. We we Israelis we're proud people you know liotam chafshi b'atzeno. You nebuch I mean we love you but you nebuch diaspora galuti people you have to worry about being oppressed and, and, and accepted and you've created a twisted form of Judaism that can't stand up to the 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 pollution Stephen, of the larger society. The question is the individual so, himself says he's a person. No. Yeah. I, I have a problem. I really, but so it, it happens. It happens that the, the people get embarrassed. But uh, but but that card is over he's, he's got a good example. I mean, it's a good case. It is overplayed. And that and, and that it came from a federation donor makes a lot of sense to me. It's just I just have to tell you that this thing about I, I have not encountered in my circles, and I keep like, <coughs> old and young. I've never. I've just. I, I hear what you're saying. I have never encountered it, and I, I do a lot of work. There is some. I have. I have data. I ask people, "Are you ashamed about Israel?" You know. But wait a second. There was a. There was a, there was a time. It was last summer. My wife and I had spent a. Uh, we, we lived here a third of the year, and we just, we just got back. And, we, and there was a series of things that had happened, like. Good things, you know, one worse, one not, not so worse. You know, the coattail, the the, 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 the the ship, the, the Turkish thing, the, the, the flotilla. The, there was, um, uh, I don't know if the doctor strike was that. There's like a whole series of things that happened, one in a row. One in a row. And we said to each other, you know, I, I guess we said, I'm ashamed of what's going on here. It really, it really deeply bothers me. We, we walk out, I'm really, it was, I'm really, Disgusted with what's 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 going on in, in this country. I'm not disgusted with what happens in Burma. 
Well, they don't call it Britain anymore. Whatever it is. Yeah, but yeah, I'm a, it's not my country. I, I hear him hear him discuss it. I don't know, I'm ashamed or whatever. But there are things that there's, there's Israelis do that imply. It's not because I'm worried about what the Goyim are going to say about me. It's not what I'm thinking about. So you, you can use the word shame, embarrassed. This guy bothers me because he's Dafka, the person Zionism tried to save or to. But to, we don't want people who are so oriented to, to the Goyish world that they're afraid to stand up for Judaism. So if he's saying it, he's afraid to stand up for Israel, I got a problem with that. And so, and so do you. But that's not, that's not what we're talking about. That's not the, vis- the, the vision of the world that I have is that is the big tent should make it easy to be a, a craven, a, a shamed Jew. That's not my idea of what I'm, what, that's not what I'm talking about. Not, not in the least. The, on the right side, I think, I, I think we have about one more question, no? Uh, I'm yeah. going to take two. Two. This two. Two. Uh, do you have a sense of what right. JTS is going to be doing with the results of your study? Uh, I, I know there's a. The, the Arnie, Arnie continues, and he's, he keeps writing about it. Arnie has, believes he has a mission to continue to write about and talk about Israel all the time. And he's, in fact, there's a. The, 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 just, he just last told me that they, they, they're planning to expand the you know, Yom Ut, Israel, Israel in the curriculum, Denny Nevins. I mean, the, all, all these people that they keep talking about, I, I know from the administration point of view that um, there's an ongoing concern to bring more, more Israel into the lives of the, the rabbinical students. It's tinkering with the program here. There was a, um, you know, there's a, there's a change made uh, a couple of years ago to give a better Israel experience. So it's, uh, all I can tell you is that I don't have concrete, but I can tell you that it's, it's um, high on the agenda. Last, last Yom Asmut, Arnie said, let's, we, we never did this, let's have a forum on Israel. So he and John Leske gave a public forum on Israel um, on Yom Asmut, um, which, had never, which had never been done before and at, at, J, at, J, at JTS. Yes, we sang a take for the end. Of course. <laughs> Might be time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and it wasn't Cheryl. It was Cheryl Maldon we did at the beginning. No, no. Um, um, so, uh, I, so I, again, I, I, I know that it's, it's so central. And Arnie sees himself as probably one of the most significant thinkers on Zionism. And he, just, just look at his work. Look at his book. He could, continues to write about it. And I also know Danny Evans, who runs the medical school, is, is, uh, is, has an ongoing concern uh, with Israel. So I have no zero complaints about that administration. They're friends of mine, but I, I show you that. They're, Last they're question, Edward. Um, you spoke about the Jewish community in Israel and the Zionist Oh, no, I, no I, I'm not going to let that pass. There are not anti-Zionists in this, in this group here. There could be somebody who, who lied to me, but they really are not. That's really not an issue. Uh, I want to talk about another group of Jews who are totally indifferent, unaffiliated. Can you give us any idea of what percentage of the American jury is completely <coughs> what I call the game? Uh, don't know anything. Don't know anything. It, it, yeah, it's a small number. Is it ten or fifteen percent? But but it, what it is, you have to understand. There is um, religion in general and ethnic groups for sure for many years has been has become or been a matter of choice. So we have people floating in and floating out. We have people who say. I'll quote, when I'm with my father, I'm Jew. When I'm with my mother, I'm Christian. We have people who say, I, I was raised Jewish. All, all my friends and friends of family were Jewish. I chose not to be Jewish. Now I'm choosing to be Jewish again because of my children. We have people, we have people who come to Judaism. We have more people who come to Judaism or become identified with Jewish people without conversion than with conversion. We have some converts, whatever, like one. For every convert, there's two or three people who say, I'm, I'm partially Jewish. Why? My grandchild's Jewish. <laughs> or my ex-husband was Jewish. And I'm giving you real people. So, they're now part of these people, these 
these wayfarers, these new sojourners, and there are people going out and people coming in. There's a, there's a lot more fluidity, as they say, than there used to be before. More, more porous boundaries, more hybridity. Um, people saying, I'm Jewish, my religion is Roman Catholic. Right. And their claim to being Jewish is pretty damn good. Well, I, 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 as a sociologist, I include, I include them as Jewish. So, um, so the question is, some of those people are actually, a, those are the types of people who, who, who build up the edge. They have one Jewish parent, generally. They may have no Jewish parents and they've opted in. So there's, there's a bunch of those, but they're still, they're still Jewish. So I, I, I don't see a sharp dividing line. Was I used to be able to say, oh, these are Jews and these are non-Jews, and you're in, you're in, you're out, you're out. I, I, I see a, a, a fuzzy area. It's like kind of like, like they, they, someone talking about the solar system, that there's supposed to be like nine planets or ten, whatever. But, oh, no, no, there's a, lot of, there's like a lot of stuff out there. All these little rocks floating around. And what's a planet? What's not a planet? Dust. That's what we have. We have a lot of Jewish dust <laughs> floating around. <laughs> Way the hell out in Neptune and Pluto. That, 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 uh, are they Jewish? They're part of the solar system, but I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, thank you. Thank you.